Welcome to another amazing episode of the Indie Escape Network presents The Sticky Microphone with special guests Tony Martin and Lawrence R. Harvey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Well, here we are, everybody. I'll, I'll pass off the sticky microphone, which begs the question, why is it sticky? Wendy's ear? James and Ellen. Cody. Oh, sorry, James. <laughs> Go ahead, James. James L. Edwards. <laughs> Amy Lee, the badass Cody. And? Joe Ridgely. That's right. Well, so everybody, we I'm excited that we are doing our show. This is... um. Our second show, and we are, we had so much fun doing this. Our second show, number two, and uh, we are having our guests. And these are some special guests because one of them, Tony Martin, um, is a British film actor director. I got to do uh, a movie with him. You know, it was I participated, and so I was really excited to have him on. And then, of course, he had uh, his friends, and in the movie as well is somebody very very special, Lawrence, um, who you will meet in just a moment, and. We're gonna. James will introduce these guys. So just before we get started, everybody, what's on every what's what's the thoughts going in everybody's heads this evening? Uh, well, I, I can't speak. Uh, I'm I'm assuming that Amy's uh, thoughts are very very tired. She's past her bedtime at this yeah. point. Why does everybody keep saying that? <laughs> she's, girl. She's, like, she's, she's a tired hey, girl. Hey, I got three kids. I'm allowed to be tired right now. Okay. She tuckers do you, out. Do you guys know Dark Hearts? Dark Hearts. Oh, dark no. Hi, Dark Hearts. Hi, Dark Hearts. Hey. Hey. Hi, dark hearts. David's in the house, and he's saying, we need to get David. We need landscaped. <laughs> Can you? We I don't know, know what landscape means, but I feel like I haven't been landscaped in a while, so that sounds fun. Yeah. I need to be, I need to be landscaped. Uh, you know, I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> uh, and Joe, we haven't talked about your balls yet, but it is coming. I just want you yeah, to know. Eventually. That. Yeah. I think that should be the, uh, the highlight of each episode, your balls. Yeah. <laughs> I think that should be towards the end of the show, and we will get to your balls. Oh, it's Richard oh, Russell. Russell, okay, Richard. Uh, Richard, <laughs> Richard. Uh, my assistant director on Trivial. Uh, he's. Uh, I'm actually getting ready to do a short film uh, for him shortly. So, hi, hi. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, Amy, they really want you to turn your phone if you can. Jeff, we already know he can. Uh, he says you light up my life. Um, Jeff suggested he's like, hey, why don't you get a backdrop or something? So. He might be saying you light up my life because I got these very cool, it looks sort of shower curtain-y. I, I don't know how, how it's reading, but some I light. I thought you were in the bathroom. I didn't know what was going on with that. Me too. I was like, I don't know if your stomach was hurting or I, I was the in the shower <laughs> and I thought I'd step out and put on something. But when we finish, I'm going to finish washing my hair. So, so you, know. we're, you, look we're, like, you look like you're at some kind of, yeah, he's David said I am manscaped. Well, nice. I was going to say, we're going to have to hear about Dave's adventure in manscaping. Hopefully he didn't include a epilady or anything. Or right. Will we'll make those? I have no idea. I can't imagine. You know, he's pretty. He's a tall guy, so manscaping, I think, might be. It might be a chore. So like, mm -hmm. I think he's like six foot five or something. Uh, I think he's taller than that, actually. He's pretty damn tall. But, yeah, he is. And yeah, okay, so anyway, um, like, next. <laughs> yeah, I honestly thought for the shower curtain was to celebrate uh, uh, our little uh, momentous occasion from this week, Wendy. Which was what? Which was the the first time you've heard me uh, in the bathroom? <laughs> we 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 we've, we've uh, we in our relationship we have broken the uh, um, uh, uh, the uh, bathroom. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Now there's a, now Wendy, there's a few other things that you need to you know let happen so you can oh get that out of the way. No, in there. No, yeah. Stepping stone. First, first she gets to hear me crap. Then I hear her crap, and then it's anal no. So by the way, just so you know, yeah. no, that doesn't happen. I, I I'm. I'll listen to him, but no, 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 no. There's, there's some, and interestingly, one of our guests, if we don't talk about anuses, it would be a crime because the human centipede mouth to anus. I mean, is there a better segue than that? Exactly. Yeah. I think not. So mm -hmm. with that being said, James, would you like to do the honors to introduce our beautiful, gorgeous guests? Of the evening? I'm absolutely honored. Uh, we have two very special guests today. Uh, our first one is an actor and director. Uh, he's known for, uh, as far as his acting, uh, he's, he's had appearances on Penny's Worth, on The EastEnders, uh, on Ted Lasso, uh, Toxic Alien Zombie Babes from Outer Space, and Straw Men. 
And he actually uh, has uh, his uh, uh, feature film, uh, Witches of the Sands, that he's written and directed, that uh, has an incredible cast on it, including our lovely uh, Wendy Zier. Um, secondly, we have the star of the Human Centipede 2 and 3, um, as well as um, uh, he's made appearances in uh, the ABCs of Death Part 2, uh, My Bloody Banjo, um, uh, the editor and Frankenstein created bikers. Uh, that would be the, uh, the amazing, uh, Lawrence R. Harvey. So here we go. We have Tony, we have Lawrence. And a little, little Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I would Good morning. first let, yeah. our, let our viewers know that it's three o'clock in the morning where they are across the pond. But... I don't know how you're still awake. I just don't. <laughs> they're troopers. That's why they, uh, they, they, they're amazing men. They're men among men. Well, I was, I was blackmailed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cody roped me into this, and I didn't know what time it was. Going to be. <laughs> L well, said, luckily, luckily, you've you've scheduled for the same day as the uh, vinegar syndrome sale, which goes on at five a.m. So, oh, you're saying that? Is that what I'm that gonna, was? I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay up for that. I think. I, well, I, I'd like to start if we can, and I appreciate you guys so much, you know, and then we can kind of go through some questions, but if you don't mind, and we'll start with Lawrence, maybe give us a little background of, you know, how you got started, your journey a little bit, and, you know, anything that you want to, you want to add, and then we'll pass to Michael Tony. So Lawrence. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I was always good at art, and then um, I wanted to go to an art college that did filmmaking because a lot of my paintings were kind of narrative based so I went to Cardiff uh, where they had painting printmaking sculpture and the fourth area which was time based arts uh, and in the first few weeks of the course you try out different things so I did a performance art course uh, a solo performance course and then uh, I did a performance which kind of was really affecting uh and then i was encouraged to join that area and uh then i did a as part of in that area i did uh, some film uh, filmmaking workshop uh but this is all like uh eight, eight millimeter film and 16 millimeter film well you had to start on eight millimeter film before you could grow up <laughs> grow up to uh 16 millimeter film uh, and I was inept with using a camera, so I, I decided to stick with the performance side of things. And then from that, I um, was working for other performance artists who then started getting work in children's TV. So I started getting work in children's TV. From that, I got an agent, was doing a lot of adverts and theatre because I was based in London. And then, um, yeah, ended up getting an audition for the Human Centipede 2. Uh, and then the rest is history. The rest is history. No, wait a minute. Are you wearing the Shining's carpet right now? I am wearing the Shining's carpet. <laughs> nice. Oh my God, that's amazing. Oh, it's it's very cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Well, I, 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 I got to get a little the wardrobe change. On that. Nice. <laughs> Look cool. at that. Oh my God. That, that's one of my favorite movies. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a classic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, Tony, what do you, what, what, how can we get, before we get into your brain, go ahead, because it's pretty crazy. I, um, well, I haven't, I haven't got an exciting jumper on, so I don't know. <laughs> I feel, I feel <laughs> underdressed. Um, uh, so, basically, well, funnily enough, I went to art college as well. Um, very similar to Lawrence in that respect. Um, uh, however, I, I, I ended up becoming a teach, art teacher in school. Uh, did that for quite a while. Then I, uh, I did a bit of extras work on TV and films and stuff. And then from that, well, not from that, I quite enjoyed it. And I got a, I got a part in um, audition. I got a part in a film called Beyond Fury with uh, Giovanni Lombardo Medici. Um, and um, and then it just went from there, really. Just get, got into the indie horror scene. Um, and then naively one day thought I'd make a movie. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> three years later, here I am. So uh, yeah, and then and sort of still going really uh, towards the end. That's 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 it in a nut in a nutshell. <laughs> now, uh, uh, 
Tony, that being said, one thing about your feature directorial debut, which is The Sand, it has an absolutely phenomenal cast. How did you go about getting all of these incredible actors and performers? Well, ask Lawrence. Um, basically, I just harassed <laughs> them. I kept turning, I turned up on their doorstep and sort of told them, I, you know, I've got their kids and. Uh, <laughs> 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 I said, you know, so I started sending their fingers back one at a time until they did it. Uh, no, um, I basically just got in touch. I just, uh, so Lawrence, I think if I remember right, I was friends with on Facebook anyway. Was I? Is that, I think, because I, oh, did I know you from Jason Wright? Well, um, I, 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 I knew about you through Jason Wright's because uh, uh -huh. uh, Jason uh, Wright is a director that does a lot of uh, low budget horror films that. It's, he's based in your part of the country, isn't he? It's sort of yeah, uh, he's in Essex, and I'm in Kent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in Southend, uh, like that's it. The, yeah, the, the, like the TIS yeah. guys. Yeah, so. yeah. So basically, it was it was just through contacts I kind of already had, like people like Lynn Lowry, I'd already knew, and um, Eileen Dietz. Uh, I was friends. I tell you, what, I started with a little bit. Was I was friends with Brandon Crane uh, from Stephen King's It. And um, so my, my son's just messaged me, just got home from a night out. It's, it's, it's crazy life of a student. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so 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 he came on board, then Eileen came on board. And then from there, I thought it'd just be really good fun to 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 sort of get this sort of ensemble cast of, you know, lots of sort of people I grew up watching and or and, and you know, in the case of like Lawrence, people that I admired. And and it just kind of snowballed, really. Uh, that's 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 a that couple of people I just got in touch with their agents. Um, but yeah, mainly through networking and, and being a real pain in the ass. If I'm being <laughs> honest. Uh, yeah, which is I was quite surprised. It's not saying I'm particularly good at usually. Well, I'll tell you <laughs> what, what it paid off. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely amazing cast that you put together on this. Yeah. yeah. No, um, uh, I'm it, it's been lovely when it's been lovely. I mean, some people obviously filmed remotely from the States or from Italy or whatever. Um, it's, it's, it's specifically it's nice when when I get to meet them and work with them face to face. Like Lawrence, uh, he came down and then Lawrence said, um, he obviously had had a didn't have a terrible time. He's coming down again in April <laughs> with, with, um, with Simon Bamford, who who played. Um, right. Oh, um, uh, 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 Butterball oh, Cenobite right. in, in, Hell, right. in Hellraiser yeah. 1 and 2, and he's, you know, friends with Clive Barker. And, and Ian McCulloch, uh, you Ian, got dragged down, yeah. Ian McCulloch came down, obviously, with Zombie Flesh Eaters and the Survivors and stuff, and he he was absolutely lovely as well. Um, bless him. You know, he drove all the way. He lives in Scotland, and he drove. drove. I said, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll get you a plane ticket. He went, no, I want to drive. So, sort of eight hours later. Yeah. <laughs> He got it turned up, and you know, he's, so that no, that was all good. He was he was really lovely. So I was still in contact. What's nice though is I'm still in contact with a lot of these people, mm. um, and so 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 that makes me quite you know makes me happy that people as well want to come back and hopefully have a have a good time. And I mean, obviously, we need to get the job done when we're on set, but um, I, I do like to sort of enjoy it while we're there, <laughs> while, while we while we while we're there, you know, while we're working. Is it, so. is it? I forgot to ask you. Was it an accident that, or it was on purpose that the acronym of the Witches of the Sands? It's twats. It's twats. Yeah, absolutely, absolute accident. Bizarrely, no one believes it, but it's it was totally accidental. Uh, but it just kind of set, it just worked. <laughs> it just it just uh, it just seemed perfect. So we we just kept it. Yeah. At first I was like, oh, hang on a minute. Then I thought, no, this is great. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I so, love it. I think that's fantastic. Amy, do you have a question? I see her sitting there looking. No, I'm just listening. I'm just I'm just getting to know these these amazing men. Pondering, <laughs> pondering. I, I, life. I'm, I'm, I'm adding up questions about the human centipede too. That's really, I, I just have some. I feel like, uh, yeah. wow, the, that movie is like. And then the f first one is like, I, I just. I think it's, it's creepy. It's, it's creepy as hell. Beautiful <laughs> film. Beautiful. I mean, the first, well, first film, first, first human centipedes. Kind of watching it for the first time, you're like, what? <laughs> and then, uh, and then and the second one's so different, isn't it? It's like it's 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 a, it's a kind of different. Beast. It tells the first one to yeah. hold its fear. I, I will tell you, <laughs> and this is true, When because I, I browse these lists, and Martin, I mean, Lawrence, I'm going to ask you about this, because when you have, like, the most, the hard, hardest to watch disturbing films of all times, almost always, Centipede 2, Human Centipede 2 comes up on that list. Yeah, all, is, all the time. Uh, yes, it is. It is very I swear difficult. to God, it's banned in some countries. I swear it is. It is. Is, is, is that true, Lawrence? I, I heard it was. Uh, I think only a couple, like uh, Sri Lanka and stuff. But uh, I think it's yeah. cut quite. It's cut though, isn't it? It's cut. It is heavily in, in, uh, yeah. it, Isn't it cut in, in England? In, in the UK, it's cut by 
three minutes 26. Which is an extraordinary and, amount of time for a film to be cut by. But they don't cut whole scenes. They cut uh, like close-ups and stuff. Mm. Whereas what? in America, the theatrical cut was cut by even longer. But nobody made a fuss about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but, uh, but yeah, on uh, disc, it's released uncut in the U.S., Nice. Um, I got to hit a couple of these comments real fast, if I may, ladies and gentlemen. We got Ken McKiernan. Good evening, friends. I've been sanitized for your protection. Um, okay, so this I'm gonna. It's gonna make me feel old. I think. Um, man, the Human Centipede films bring me back to my middle school years. Oh no! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's middle school. Uh, uh, what year was the first one made? Does anybody recall? Two thousand and nine. Mm-hmm. It, was. Okay. Well, it was released in 2009. So. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Dark Hearts, you're a youngin. Yeah, he's a baby. <laughs> I didn't really that, that, that actually brings up a good point, uh, Lawrence. You've collaborated with director Tom Six multiple times. How did yeah. you two come about meeting? It was at, it was at the audition for um for Human Centipede 2. Um uh basically I'd moved from London by this stage because my money had run out. <laughs> And then, mm-hmm. um, but my agent was that. giving me a call and bringing me down to London every now and again for a casting. And he, he sort of got in touch uh, about the casting for Human Said to Be Two. Uh, and I was humming and ahhing. Well, I, I'd, I'd heard of the first film, uh, mm. which was still on the on the festival circuit at that time. It, it mm. uh, hadn't been properly released yet. And then, um, um, because there was going to be a screening on the same day, uh, I went to, yeah, came down to London for, saw it on the day that I did the audition, and then, yeah, an hour and a half after, after, um, after finishing the screening, I was in the audition with Tom and Ilona. So yeah. Now, how did that how did that audition go? I'm I'm just so curious. Well, you, you know, there was no script, um, but Tom talked me through. The whole film scene by scene um and then he got me to do some some of the the scene to, to enact some of the scenes and he was saying you know martin doesn't talk very much and blah blah he, we want to see him getting picked on by uh somebody at work and we want to see uh the scene where the mother finds him his scrapbook and rips it up and you bash her head in and uh and then it kept sort of getting uh, more and more sort of intense. So then it was like, uh, would you like to do the rape scene? <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, I sort of flipped a chair over and proceeded to rape the chair. So. <laughs> that's that normal, normal audition, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and normal, all, all, all of the work. <laughs> yeah. It's an incredibly powerful and brave performance. Because I'm, I mean, I have to assume... <laughs> Or uh, before that film, had you done anything to that extremes as far as a character? Um, well, you know, you I come from a performance art background, so I'm kind of used to sort of seeing uh, extreme stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, during the audition, you know, uh, when Tom, Tom was t- taking me through the, the, uh, the script, you know, at that stage I was really into sort of Japanese splatter films. So I was going like, oh, oh, that's like the All Night Long Trilogy Part 2. And oh, oh, that's like Guinea Pig and uh, or Brian Young's Society, you know. So, um, so yeah, society. so for me, it was like, um, you know, I was really excited about what Tom uh, wanted to do. And I'd liked, I liked what I saw in the first film. I liked that kind of mix of high art and low art. Because it sort of has a feel very much like The Vanishing, uh, George Sluzier's uh, The Vanishing, in that it's kind of set in the same place, that kind of liminal space between countries, in, in this case, Holland and Germany. Uh, and so, so yeah, I, I sort of like that and sort of references to sort of 70s French policiers. And then at the same time, it was kind of almost a spoof of like the Mad Scientist film as well, you know, so... Uh, you know, and lots of kind of, it was taking the piss out of lots of kind of horror tropes of like, you know, one girls wandering around in the in the forest at night kind of thing. You know, so right. so so yeah. I mean, you know, I think the first half hour of the first film, you kind of 
watching it and thinking, is this a good film or is it a bad film? Or is it uh, is it a good film that's taken the piss out of bad films? And, and you know, so I think you, you decide for yourself, I think, uh, whether you go with it or not. So. Well, I wanted to say, first of all, and I think most people feel this way, the, the character Martin is, is, it's very disturbing because on one hand, you feel horrible for him and you identify with him and you love him. And then he's, you know, doing these horrible <clears> things. <throat> but my main question is, and I told you I was going to ask this, was it a dream? What's your theory? <laughs> was it a dream? Was the movie a dream? That's the theory. That okay. it was, it was I, think, I think Tom's left the ending deliberately okay. ambiguous. When I, when I watched it, I took it to be, you know, literally everything happened and then, uh, the sirens at the end um, and the the baby crying at the end. Is the baby the kid in the car? And the sirens are coming because somebody's alerted the police about the baby in the car. And therefore, Martin's going to be arrested or for some, you know, taken in for some reason and then they'll find out about his plans. Or is the baby him thinking back to his own childhood uh, as he realises the game's up, as the police arrive. Uh, that's what I took it to be when I first saw it. But then a lot of people in the same screening said, oh, it was all a dream, because it goes back to a shot earlier in the film. But then I've watched the film like about 15 to 16 times, and it's not. it doesn't go back to a shot earlier in the film. It goes back to a, a shot similar to an earlier shot, Okay. But it's not the same shot, so therefore, um, I think thinking that it's a dream is just rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> but what, one, what, one, yeah. one fan th theory that I liked was that um, actually the ending of the film is a dream. Everything happened. Centipede went up Martin's backside uh somewhere in the anal passage bit him repeatedly and so filled with the toxins of the centipede as martin's dying he goes into this delirious dream state in which he imagines himself back in his happy place which is watching the human centipede the first first sequence in his own little cubby hole in the middle of the night on his own well, I know with when his, I put a centipede crap. up my ass, I usually go to a very happy place. But yeah. <laughs> I, I, what do you? What happens when you put the centipede up your ass? Do you do the same thing? <laughs> um, <laughs> see, uh, that's the magic of film. You see, I, I can. Uh, after I don't that, after the hand, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very interesting. Um, uh, you, I mean, you're you were initially an actor who transitioned to a director, a writer and director. Am I understanding that correctly? As far as uh, well, your... kind of loosely speaking, <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, it, it's all been a bit of a crazy, crazy ride, really. Um, mm. like, uh, Witches of the Sands came about. I was originally I was asked to to just uh, direct a fifteen minute film for an anthology. Um. And that's when I'm, sort of Brandon Crane came on board, and then, but that, and then that film, the anthology, fell through. So I was left with some footage. So I just came up with this great idea of thinking, I know, I'll make a feature film. Um, naively, uh, three years later, we're nearly finished. <laughs> um, uh, it's been a bit of a journey. So yeah, essentially, uh, essentially, yeah. Um, I did. I was acting first. Yeah. Um, I love acting. I love writing. I love directing. Yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. Um, at, with you as an actor and writer, what were some of your influences? Who, uh, what were some of your mo uh, favorite yeah. movie directors? Oh, wow! Well, um, uh, funnily enough, I mean, and it wasn't really an influence of this so much, but Lawrence and I both share a, 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 a favorite movie, which isn't a horror film or a favorite movie, it's, got, it's a wonderful life, but that's uh, another story. Um, uh, my influences for witches, uh, basically, what I've done is take a lot of different sort of subgenres and and played with them um, in in the film. So when when Wendy did her scene, we were looking at sort of the, the, the Italian giallo, um, but there's some sort of 
there's 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 yeah. references to um slasher films there's references to monster films and zombie films and vampire films and um and a folk a folk big big folk horror obviously yeah and and and, and crazy crazy stuff and the, the the first scene that um uh lawrence did was a, a kind of crazy christmas gang cry father christmas gang and that was all very odd and um yeah so it's just basically basically um the 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 kind of witches has two narratives there's 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 the narrative of this director making a b movie and his life descending you know into carnage and 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 mental breakdowns and as he's making it um which is to, could be actually funny i've become far too close to, to home and uh <laughs> and <laughs> and then um and then as as you see that happen you then see you see you get to see the film he's making as well uh this sort of b movie you know so we've, we've been able to 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 cut different scenes in from this weird film he's making and basically something so we can basically get away with doing whatever we like uh within that you know because we have these very meta scenes where you know we see the director behind the scenes talking about the scenes coming up and what we have to leave out and and, and talking to the cast and the crew and then we see them looking at the rushes of the, the weird films he's you know the scenes he's been doing and so yeah so um totally lost my train of thought now um <laughs> no, I, but you know I, what Tony? <laughs> i remember when you said that to me i like, just maybe when you were telling me how to do my scene and and uh, I was I'm Joyce over right, and you're like Joyce over the voice. Joyce over the voice over. Joyce yeah. over like, it's really meta. It's a very meta scene. I want you to film yeah. it like this. I thought it was very it's very clever. So it was that's right because you actually that's right because you're seeing you're actually you, we, we you see you see the director on, on the way to the to his for the premiere of his film. And he, by this point, he's really lost it. Um, you know, you know the premiere. He ends up he's on stage and he jumps into the crowd and, and kills everyone. Um, after after watching the film. Uh, and your your scene was yeah you were doing the voiceover with Tony uh, the director in the in the car going to the premiere Voice but then we see, when we see then we see the, but then t Tony's so fed up with this voiceover in his head that he actually gets out of the car into your house and kills you at, as you're doing the voiceover. In my studio right over here. Yeah, so it was, <laughs> so it was really fun. Yeah, so yeah you can yeah yeah that was that was yeah quite proud of that scene actually. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see. Joe, I, I don't know if uh, if I should ask you have we missed any comments or. No, not as of yet. Not of yet. All right. But all right. We got we got plenty of questions for him. So. I know. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> actually, uh, this one's uh, this one's for Lawrence. Actually, you had done a film um, uh, where you played Father Clark in, uh, for Astro Nine's uh, The Editor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that environment like? I, I I'm a huge fan of those guys, especially their film Father's Day, and yeah. it just seems like a really fun work environment. Yeah, I mean, I was a I'd met the guys, I'd met, um, I think it was Connor and Adam uh, at, uh, at conventions when they were promoting Father's Day. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, saw their earlier shorts and stuff and Manborg and so on. So I was a big fan of theirs. And then um, Adam kind of got in touch saying, would I be interested in doing uh, a small role in in uh, the editor? Um and they said, but we've got no money. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I uh, luckily, uh, a Canadian uh, convention had, had invited me over and I said, well, if we can do it during, around this time, then the convention can pay for me to get over to Canada right. and you just pay my travel from thing and just give me a, you know, but, uh, yeah, I'll do it for you, the basic rate they were offering. So, uh, yeah. It was it was uh, it was all it was all timing, mm. uh, it was just just good. And then getting over there, and the, the whole all the church scene was set in a church that uh, I think Matthew's parents go to. I'm not I'm not sure whether it was Matthew's or Adam's. But I think Matthew's. So so they were around a lot, and then um, so it had a very kind of fa familial kind of atmosphere, <laughs> you know, uh, and also because it. It's just scenes with me and uh, me, Adam, and me and Matthew. So it was literally just the three of us acting, and then you know, camera sound and uh, AD and and uh, a couple of helpers, and then uh, the parents with uh, were providing sandwiches and coffee. So, <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, and you know, it was uh, obviously. 
it was in I think was it March or something. So, uh, you know, uh, going to Canada and going to into uh, um, past Winnipeg and so on, you see all this snow around, even though it's March and it's all. Mm-hmm. I went to as, go, as, as you're leaving Winnipeg. There's this huge mountain. Uh, I said, so what's that mountain called? And it's Oh, that's just the where they shovel the snow from the road. <laughs> it's just it's just all piled up in this massive, uh, hit, like it, it, or, you know, bigger than a hill, bigger than uh, a normal hill, anyway. So <laughs> yeah. we we just we just did a we've done a, a similar thing. We're talking about only going over to the convention, but you know, paying paying for yeah, you know, yeah. paying and everything. But we've got we've just done something similar. We there's a there's a festival in Essex um, in a couple of weeks uh, with uh, Giovanni. Lombardo Medici yeah. from, you know, Cannibal Phelps, Cannibal Apocalypse, and everything. He's done a little. He did a little bit remotely uh, for the film, but it's, so he's he's flying over with uh, Sylvia Colatina from Fulci's House by the Cemetery. So we've we I've nabbed both of those for for a day while they're <laughs> while they're over <laughs> while they're over to 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 do a crazy scene with us as well. So some, it's just about sometimes taking the opportunities, isn't it? And 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 just working working the 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 you know the, to, to to the situation and getting getting the most out of what you you know the, what's what's available you know so um yeah that's 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 a little thing i just thought yeah, sorry. i think that's a great tip for budding filmmakers that want to get somebody in the, yeah yeah exactly the look out for the conventions and uh, it, exactly Exactly. Try and meet, yeah, meet these people at conventions and 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 then yeah, and and stalk them really, <laughs> <laughs> and t- turn up at their house at three in the morning and you know send sending them hearts from the butchers stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> you did um, a, a short film I thought that was like banned or what was it Libra? Is that what it Libra, was? Libra. Wow. Yeah, okay, so <clears throat> yeah, it, it wasn't banned exactly, but it was it was. Um, so what happened was there's a, there's a film called Horoscopes. Uh, so um, and the, so the idea was an anthology, twelve directors each get a star sign, uh, which I thought was a great idea. So we we, we were asked to, to to do it. We got Libra, which is my star sign, funnily enough. Um, so we just we created a, a short film. Um, and didn't think too much of it and really enjoyed it really loved it really enjoyed it i came up with this sort of crazy little idea um and we submitted it to to the producers and they kind of turned around and said it's a bit too extreme for us i'm afraid uh tony we can't we can't use it so that was a show we were a bit a bit disheartened because we had the, the, the score was by um paul wiley who did the score for terrifier one and two Mm. And and it and it looked great. We had this great team on it. You know, it only took us two. It's only six minutes. It took us two days to shoot it. Um, yeah, got it. You know, the editor edited it. Went over to Paul. He did a great, great, great um, score for it. Really pleased with it. So we were a bit disheartened. Um, but then I played at a couple of festivals, and they really liked it. And then it's now it's found that it's found a new home now in a, in a new anthology. So uh, oh. so so that's all good, and that'll be out hopefully um, the end of this year sometime. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, we, I'm excited about that. I've... It's it's um there's a lot of um there's a lot of penis in it. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm watching it. Yeah. <laughs> Amy and I love penises. Amy and I love penises. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, weird. it's weird because I'm not a massive fan myself. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm, mine's fine. I like, you know, I'm happy with mine, but um, good, that's good. but you know, I each of them. Um, yeah, but I mean, this one does feature a lot of maggots coming out the the end of it. But um, <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all about those bodily insertions again, isn't it, Lawrence? <laughs> <laughs> Are we doing that? Is that that's from a different thing? The the, the the pictures that you sent, that's from something else. That's not from Libra. The the Hitler. No. The, the... That was that was witches. Yeah, that's witches. Okay, right, witches. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Now you said that you had some uh, human centipede uh, questions for uh, for Lawrence. What do you got for him? Well, oh, me or Amy? Amy. No, I'm just I'm, I'm just. I'm just still thinking. When did you go? I'm still thinking. Go just, ahead. Just, can I just, just, just quickly though? Actually, um, I should just mention as well that uh, Libra was influenced to a certain extent um, from, Necrom- from Necromantic, the the, the German oh. film, uh, and all, but also Human Centipede too. We we looked at quite a lot, uh, and we filmed it in black and white as well. Um, 
so yeah, and and the main kind of the the the, the antagonist in it, um, it, it has a lot of similarities to to Martin and you know Human Centipede too. Uh, Mike, you know, no, you know, no barbed Mike. wire or, or sandpaper though. No, there's no yeah, barbed just, wire just or sandpaper. But yeah. No, yeah. It has got a couple of nasty, nasty shots in it, you know. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just it was a, there's a still similar kind of tone to it, I suppose. Uh, was is what we were going for, and that very stark sort of lighting and um, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I just thought I just sort of throw that in there. Uh, credit where credit's due and all that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Actually, Wiener Maggots is my band's name, Keith. Yeah. <laughs> What's your band's name? Wiener Maggots. Wiener Maggots. Well, you you need to see Libra in that case because there's there's, there's a total combination of the two. <laughs> Are you allowed to say the name of the anthology that it's going to appear in? It hasn't got a name yet. It's it's All right. the the it, the producer is like called Dean of the Dean of the Dead. Um, uh, the, the film itself hasn't got a yeah hasn't got a title. But this, the other segments are done by the guy who did um uh what's it called um beach beach party massacre or something the beach beach pool massacre no okay. beach pool, pool, pool party massacre pool, pool, pool party massacre thank you so much you're welcome yeah and, yes, I know um, him well. and, and, and as an, a, a Welsh director called uh, Jonathan Zorin he's done he's done a bit he did a great film called um uh, Wyvern Hill which I think is, was released in the states as Hollow um yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, and and, uh, and and a couple of others. Um, so we, we're quite happy with where where, where it is now. So mm -hmm. yeah. So Tony, you really brought up a really good point as far as the the starkness of the black and white. Um, as far as uh, Lawrence, I know in the U.S. Um, there was a box set that was released for um, the Human Centipede trilogy, and one of the special features for um, Human Centipede Two was a color uh, color version of yeah. Part Two. In yeah. your opinion, as a, as a performer and a major part of that film, what do you prefer? Uh, the black and white, definitely. Yeah, same. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, you know, Tom sh uh, well, it was shot in color. Tom always intended to drain the color. Mm. Uh, and then when he was playing around with the color grading, he, he sort of liked it in black and white. And I think it, it sort of suits black and white a lot more. And I, th I think the sound, industrial soundscape came, I'm not sure if that came after the color grading, but uh, I think like the industrial soundscape and the black and white sort of work really well together, I think. Mm. So. Mm. Yeah. Um, if the, thing, the thing with black and white is that I think, I think you know, I was, I, Reminds me again of being at art college because we see we see we, everything we see we see in color, don't we? Uh, you, when we, as human beings we we see in color. So when when you're presented with something in in black and white, there's an automatic you're automatically uh, viewing it slightly differently uh, to 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 the real world. Uh, it's almost you know there's a fantasy element to it almost because it, it's it's something we don't view as people. Does that make sense? So if you're looking at something like black and white photography or, you know, you know a lot of sort of surrealist things, you know, often portrayed in black and white, you know, I think, I don't know. And, and sometimes, but sometimes it's the, it's when, when someone's going about like in Libra and, and again in, in Human Centipede 2, uh, when someone's going about something quite normal, or, you know, everyday kind of thing, it's, it, when it's in black and white, there's, there's still an element of fantasy to it because it's in black and white. That's 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 kind of my take on it. Because, I, I, because, I, because... I disagree. I'd, I'd say the opposite. Okay. How because it's in black and white, it's more like newspaper photography kind of thing. Mm. What well, sort of reportage? Uh, yeah, yeah, and all like performance art documentation. You know, it, it it feels more like that than it does um a normal film kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think it, no, like I said, it makes it cold no, no, and, and very like cold and industrial. And, you know, like Schindler's List was black and white and it takes out any warmth and any, it, it's it's harsh. It makes yeah, something. That's a kind of watch. lush black and white, I think. I think there's a kind of like grainy, dirty, scuzzy black and white that you get in like, you know, underground film and, yeah. you know, whether it's Thundercrack or Begotten or something, you know. Right. So, or you know, wedding trough. So mm -hmm. it's that kind of, for me, uh, the the black and white in, in Human Centipede 2 is is more like that, more akin to that than it is to uh, fantasy. <laughs> it, well, no, I might, I might, I mean, I, 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 I know, like, when uh, I said, Cocteau's uh, 
Bello Labette is in black and yeah. white, but I think it's a different kind of black and white, a different yeah, feel. I didn't when I said fantasy, I wasn't referring to the genre of fantasy, I suppose. No, no, I no, I, I, was... I know you weren't, but uh, I, I think, um, I don't, I think because Hollywood kind of dominates English speaking cinema, I think I see if, if it's in color, I tend to think of it as being a kind of we read it as a kind of Hollywood film mm. industry, mm. Kind of. it, it, exactly. I think, I think, yeah, it's exactly. That, I, mean, I think that's example. more fantastical than. Hey, Jason. <laughs> he says, my bit. I do want to ask, hey, Jason from Panic Terror Films. Hi. I want to actually ask you guys both a question because I think this is, to me, this is very interesting. And both of you, especially, and first I'll go to Lawrence, tell me about the fan base and some, if you have any funny fan stories, because I know that the, the fans can be pretty extreme, <clears throat> the, the Human Centipede series. Anything you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've had your experiences. Uh, that I can share. Um, this is a pretty crazy show. We're, you're allowed to say it. Yeah, have you ever have you ever seen anyone with a human centipede tattoo? Oh yeah, like, all the time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And, and, and my face as well. On, uh, oh wow. So, yeah. Um, and but yeah, I mean, we get sort of coprophage phages. Uh, people that or cop files, uh, a lot of cop files in the audience. Wait, what are uh, they? Called? What are they called? Cop profile people that did cop profage is eating yeah. poop. And uh, Thank cop you, you, is wait a poop. minute, I'm sorry, do you say people that are eating poop? People that are either eating or having sex with poop <laughs> involved. Sexually yeah. aroused by, sexually poop aroused by, poop. by yeah. yeah. Like, like, are we, why are we acting like this is like, like we're and not talking about that. That. I'm like, what the hell? Okay, <laughs> but wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. At the beginning of the show, didn't we talk about James finally being able like, to yes. poop in your house? Yeah. Yeah. Morgan pooping on the on the phone oh, while talking to me. Yeah. No, 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 no. Guys, don't be so fucking suburban. It happens. Two <laughs> 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 girls, girls, one cup. Thank you, Ken. I, I, actually, like. When it, the film came out in Australia, there's, they released a trailer that was a reaction trailer to supposedly to Human Centipede 2, but actually they were showing them two girls, one cup. <laughs> the advert for, for Human Centipede 2. <laughs> oh. That's, that's so, yeah, of, co of course I had to find a, a full copy of the, the film. <laughs> so, so I got a question that is kind of pertaining to that. Mm. Fan art. Have you gotten any weird fan art? Like at conventions or did he freeze? Um, oh. <laughs> not, not really weird, but you know, I mean, there's plenty of people that sort of attach three Barbies together or the Smurf cartoon or somebody <laughs> Hello Kitty cartoon. Uh, centipede, so, yeah. That's very funny. That's wow. Amazing. That is interesting, and it's you know it's you always see that little Keith Herring looking cartoon of the three people you know yeah. mouth, last to mouth the little X's. But, but I, th I, th I think that the, the best one is, is like when you get like um, uh, you know a, a, a sort of penis with barbed wire wrapped around it and say, "Will you sign this?" Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, but, but there is a um, the Golden Lomax in uh, Australia. It's a uh, an award uh, handed out, which is a gold sprayed uh, dildo with a <laughs> with barbed wire around. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a, a very wow. veiny. Uh, wow. Wow. Amy, wow. Uh, we're, we're a much, much, much coveted award. Sounds fun. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the barbed wire around the penis. So you're saying people come to you with barbed wire around their actual penis, wanting you to sign it? Or no, 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 no. Round up. That's weird. I would have to. I mean, I would say yes. I guess I don't know. <laughs> it's a it's a no from me. It's a no for you. A hard no. <laughs> hard no or a soft yes. Soft yes. Um, it depends, depends how much I had to drink. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Flowers is saying Enema Cinema. Enema Cinema. Oh, thank you, Greg. Yeah. I, I can imagine. I mean, there, there are people that enjoy. I mean, look, I, you know, who am I to judge? There are people that enjoy it. So that's interesting that it does attract people that 
either are comfortable with things in the in the ass or they like it or they're just they think it's cool i su suppose get the whole <laughs> screwing shit <laughs> Well, it's not necessarily screwing shit. It's just basically if, if somebody wants to, some people get off on the idea of somebody dropping a Cleveland steamer on their tits. That's oh, all. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well put. Wendy, Wendy, I know you're flipping out right now. Yeah, he, he, he says he has these terms that they're real gross. Don't even ask him what an Alabama hot pocket is. Don't even ask him. Don't do it. No, so, no. Um, Tony, I, I actually have a question for you uh, on this one. Nice yeah. save. Uh, I'm, worried, I'm worried about where this is going off. No, that no, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Alabama hot I, I guess back on the topic. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, you've really lived the indie experience over the last three years, creating your own feature film from the ground yeah. up. What's mm. been the hardest part of the journey? What's, what's been, for you personally, what's been the hardest part? Um, Honestly? Mm -hmm. um it's some of it's been an absolute nightmare um financially um i mean you know i hate to bring it down on it but <laughs> um uh you know um uh, I've, uh, basically um uh, uh i separated from my wife basically because of it and oh, no. um not 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 just because of the film but um other things as well but i think the amount of time that you that i've put into it as um um uh was a was a main cause of that but it, it uh, it's 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 the production side as apart from apart from the yeah apart from the, the the personal stuff i've gone through with it um the production side i find really hard um uh, you know, writing, directing, acting, love it, love it, love it. But it's because it, because of obviously such a small budget. It's just me kind of doing everything. Then I'm 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 working out the budget, locations. If we got any food? Where's the actors? What time are we getting on set? What time are we wrapping? Where are they stay in? You know, it it is. It, it, I hate. I hate. My 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 brain doesn't work like that. It's not. It's not logical enough to 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 do it well. You know. I mean, I've done it and I do it. Um, but it, there's no enjoyment out of the production side of it at all. Um, it, it's it's too rigid, you know. It's too, you know. Everything has to be set in stone, you know, to make sure you get the best out of and the most out of out of the day, you know, the day shoot or whatever. Um, so they can't. There's no. There's no area. There's no way you can wing it. That part of it, you know. So that 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 part I find really really hard. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, budget-wise, obviously, it's really hard because, again, at the beginning, this this was this film wasn't supposed to happen. You know, it was it was it just grew and grew and grew. Um, we you know we did a crowd fundraiser and we got a lot. You know, we did really well on that, but um, you know that obviously it lasts as long as it lasts. Um, wow, what a what a downer that's been. Let's <laughs> um, <laughs> let's. Just to just, I think, I think, I think, I think the 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 the, the pros outweigh the cons. Um, you know, um, it's kind of it, it is what it is, and I'm quite, we're nearly at the, we're at the finish line now. You know, we've just got right. a couple of big scenes to go, and um, and then a couple of you know studio studio days. Um, but yeah, it, it's it, it's it's without if it hadn't gone for three years, it would be a very different film, and the film wouldn't be anywhere near as exciting and. Uh, uh, good, if I can use that word, you know, uh, as it is. Right. So, now that said, what would you say to kind of spin it? What would what was the most rewarding part of this? Working with Lawrence. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, no, no, I mean, look, I mean, I mean, there's been there's there's been there's a lot of there's been a lot of great stuff from from you know meeting new people. Um, uh, it's not something I particularly relish a lot of the time. I've not been the most sociable of people. Um, so, you know, when the pandemic hit, I was in my element. You know, if I can stay indoors, fucking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never have to see anyone again. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so meeting people, you know, getting to work with people like Lawrence and, and, and Ian and, you know, with Simon coming down and Lindsay Drew Honey and, um, gosh, fucking hell! I, 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 I've forgotten people, and I'm going to get in trouble. Um, and then, and then, but... I think some of the best people involved are, are, aren't the ones that are necessarily big names, but like Mike, Mike Butler, and oh. I know M M Melissa's got her name in a certain other area, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, no, no, exactly. Yeah, sorry, I, I, yeah, I, I was just saying, I was just saying that when you know, um, 
obviously, you know, working with people I've, uh, you know, admired and grew up watching and um, uh, and the films I absolutely adore is, is fantastic. But like like Lauren said, it's it's like working quite closely with with a small amount of uh, very talented people who have who have contributed and, and put their time in, put their, uh, you know, love into the project. That, you know, it's, it's really rewarding and it means a lot to me. You know, people like, like Andy and, and Mike and uh, there's a guy called Jay who's come on board doing special effects. And um, we, uh, we've, you know, we've got a nice sort of team together. So that's, that's, that's really amazing. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's a really, uh, that's, that's a massive positive for me. Well, that, uh, unfortunately, I mean, how, how... yeah. Uh, how sorry, we sorry. first connected? How we first connected was through Andy, actually. Oh, it was. Of course, it was. Yes, yes uh, through through Jason. Because, yeah, and, uh, Andrew worked on uh, Andrew that is the the chief uh, DOP camera guy. Yeah, DOP. He uh, works a lot with Jason Royce. That's uh, so. I the think I first worked on the house that zombie zombies built, if I remember rightly. Was it? I th no, it was. Um, I know Andrew was involved with Mannequin. So. Oh, was he? I didn't know that. Yeah. Tony, um, you might have mentioned this, and I, I know I've asked you a few times. Do you have a, a date or like a target date of when this is, it's going to come out, or that you're looking? Well, at? here's the thing. Um, so we've got we've got three shoot dates lined up. Then we've got one big scene to do involving a big suit of armor and a demon, and so knights versus demons, which is a wow. crazy, again, that's a weird, crazy idea. The ones I had in my head, I just couldn't get, I couldn't leave it. Oh, <laughs> it's just, I, I just, it was, it just had to be done. And then, and then we've got a couple of days in the studio, and then it's the, the editors are kind of getting it together, little, editing little bits of scenes together as we go. Um, so I would hope, I would hope the end of this year to the beginning of next year. I would imagine more the beginning of next year um because yeah. then obviously we've got to get the the music and we've got some great songs in it it's, it's not a musical but it's like you know a bit like the wicker man you know in some respects in that um the, there is some there was some sort of music in it and songs in it but then obviously we've got to get it scored i'm hoping paul wiley again from terrifier one and two will will come back on board with us and, and do some of that with us um but yeah i think i think by the time we've got post done then beginning of next year would be would be okay. the target so just be four years, four years, four four years in the making. So and, and realistically, Jaws took four years to make. Bad Taste took four years. To make. <clears throat> it, it, I I I know I know I know I I, I do I I get that. It's just it's, it just seems like a, a long time. I don't get you know like I say you know it's it's great and I, I wouldn't have it any other way. But um, steep learning curve. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well. I can I can tell you. Let's see. I live in your world, twenty four seven, small knit, dedicated crews are the best. Less complicated getting mm. stuff done. And and I know that's how James works as well. You know because he he uses the same circle of people that he likes. And you know it's I've I've watched it. It's it's a labor of love and it's a lot of work, James. I mean, you well, have uh, headaches. So everyone's that. got you know the whole you know the team have obviously got other jobs as well. So it, it's right. just it's it, you know it's like it's like. You, when can we get together? When can we get this next scene done? When can the actors get in? When can you know it is? So it's just it's, it's it can be it's that logistical nightmare sometimes. That's that's what takes so long. Obviously, you know it, it's it's nice to be able to do it over such a, such a time period because it means money wise it's not so bad. I can you know I can work it out. Right. Um. Uh. But yeah, it's it's uh it, yeah it's time it's time to. To, to get it finished. The trouble is, I kept writing every, every now and again. Something popped into my head, and I kept thinking, "Right, I'm only making, I'm only ever going to produce one film. This is it." And so, if someone popped into my head. I thought, "Oh, fucking hell, that's great!" And I had to write. I was fucking sitting there writing it, like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it was like, and everyone's like, "Everyone's like, Tony, for fuck's sake, stop writing, <laughs> stop writing for this fucking film." So uh, yeah, so I've, I've stopped now. Well, so we're we're getting close to the end time. So I'd love to kind of, if it's okay, before we wrap it up, maybe I would, each of you, you know, I'd love for you to just, you know, maybe say something you've got coming up or something that you want to let everybody know, whether it's, you know, something to promo or if you want to give a shout out to your, you know, your best buddy, whatever you want to do. But Lawrence, the floor is yours. Uh well, uh, I don't know what I've got coming out um, <laughs> film-wise. <laughs> I, I know there's plenty that's in post-production or mm. whatever. But, um, I, you know, I regularly have uh, releases out with uh, Cadabra Records, uh, yes. who are based in uh, upstate New York. Um, 
which is kind of final spoken word of uh, readings of classic horror stuff. So uh, The White People uh, is coming out soon. And then uh, I've, there's a couple that I've just recorded, uh, including uh, Polidori's The Vampire. So, uh, yeah. Mm. All right. One more question, if I may. Where can your fans find you on social media? Uh, I tend to use uh, Twitter more than anything. So it's uh, at Lawrence R. Harvey. Okay. Tony, the floor is yours. Uh, okay. So, ooh, look at those bags. Um, yeah. <laughs> you look yeah, great. Like me right now. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So, uh, so I've got a. I've written a book of um, poetry uh, and short stories uh, with some illustrations as well, which, which is kind of in the final process of, of sort of uh, getting designed and stuff. So I'm hoping to get that sort of published at some point, uh, maybe this year. Um, so there's that. Um, then on, funnily enough, in, in Essex at this film festival, Libra's showing, well, another film I'm in called, um, I should think Lawrence is in as well, Video Shop Tales of Terror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of course you are. Yeah, I saw it the other day. Yeah. Um, which, uh, we, we saw the other day at another film festival, and my, my segment that I, I sort of directed a little segment, a little trailer, was, uh, was, was censored, funnily enough. Everything I do gets censored. <laughs> so this one, this one, they went in, uh, in Essex in a couple of weeks, it's going to be shown uncut, so that'd be nice. Um, so I've got those coming up. Um, then I'm acting in something, God knows what, I can't think what it is. And, oh, I, I'm just, I, funnily enough, I just, I did, um, I started uh, learning my script. I'm on stage doing Alice in Wonderland, funnily enough, uh, in oh, April. Nice. So, um, so I've just started learning my script for that. But yeah, I mean, the big one obviously is Witches of the Sands. Um, uh, getting that done, getting that finished, getting that out. Um, uh, and big thanks to everyone who's been involved. You know, everyone who's worked in the states and in England and uh, and everything. So I'd like you know, big thanks to everyone and much love. And uh, looking forward to to getting it done and social media if your fans want to follow up uh witches of the sand the witches of the sands on instagram the witches of the sands on facebook um tony marden um on facebook and instagram uh, i tend don't tend to use twitter because it scares me a little bit um <laughs> you, you are not the only one i don't think i've yeah. ever had it amy, you, yeah. you use instagram amy right instagram Insta is my big one yeah and tiktok i like tiktok TikTok. I've never used TikTok. TikTok scares me as well. Yeah, <laughs> I feel scary. like I, need, I feel like I need to dance or something. Yeah, doing dances. You gotta do a little... <laughs> do a weird thing where you got bag your top and all of a sudden you've got a bikini on or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> Maybe we should. Maybe. In fact, underneath here. Oh, look at the oh. tattoos! I have like tattoos. Tattoos are my thing. There we go. You like some tatted? Amy likes some tatted. Well, damn! I'm not going to show my half sleeve. <laughs> None of this. <laughs> you guys, I cannot tell you. Uh, you know, and 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 James and and Joe and Amy, you can thank them too. But I, you know, I really do want to thank you guys for waking up in the middle of the night. The early or morning hours, yeah, whatever. Yeah, didn't didn't get to sit, didn't get any sleep. <laughs> <laughs> For staying up, you know, staying really. up. So go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Till so five, anyway. Uh, so so you want to get on that? Get on that vinegar. Have you got anything? Uh, have you got anything on? Uh, you got your eye on on the vinegar syndrome? Well, it, well, it, it, it's the special smut sale. So. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> that what that is? Is it? A, it's like a big. It's merchandise. Well, with the, with Valentine's Day, it's their big smut sale because it's all the adult stuff. Yeah, um, there you go. There you go. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a. Um. Yeah. Blu-ray sort of um company DVD. Label, yeah. So, yeah. Really hoping for Cafe Flesh uh, uh, to be announced. That's my hope for tonight. So. Yeah. The, James, yeah. 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 Fingers crossed. Stay away yeah. from that stuff because he he has a, he likes to buy all those blue. He, You've got to stay away from that. <laughs> you guys, thank you so thank much. Thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's been uh, it's been very entertaining. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> I just got to ask Lawrence if one wanted one of those sweaters, where does oh, one get one? I'm curious. Oh, I mean, I got it when Mondo put it up for sale in their shop, but it's uh, middle of beyond. Uh, whatever you get, uh, yeah, I'm sure middle of beyond have their own website. So no, beyond, mm -hmm. yeah. okay, fantastic stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wow, it's well, amazing. Everybody, thank you so much. Hang around, we will end the show. But I, everybody, great show. 
I, I learned a lot. And, and <laughs> what was it? What was the kind of people that like like poop in their sex? Coprophilia. Coprophilia. Coprophagia. That's a weird shit. That's weird. If there's Wendy's, one on, Wendy's, Wendy's typing it in now. Yeah. She's <laughs> yeah, Wendy. Wendy's someone who won't even show her ass. She's going to laugh. By the way, wow. yeah, that's a, that's a thing. No, no. Won't, won't I, I mean, are, are there other people that go beyond that and prefer the undigested things in it? Or if, you, if there's a, if you can think of pink out there for it, that's no. fine. There's nothing wrong with it. There's a crazy sort of vomit thing as well, isn't there? Like, oh, people like oh, I remember after. seeing that on Howard Stern years back. Mm, people right, vomiting okay. on people, and I used to think that feet, like the foot fetishes, were weird. Now I think that that's normal. Listening to this shit. Yeah, that's normal. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty tame, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I, All right. Uh, uh, on that note, I, I'm going to cut it there. If I, <laughs> I love talking about it. But thank you, Lawrence and Tony. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. It was absolutely fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. Tony and Lawrence, have a great evening, guys. Thanks, guys. Hey. Bye, you guys. Well. Are we guys, on? We'll, we'll 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 do a little wrap up. What do you say, Joe? What say what say you? What say hey, it's your so gig, man. I, I'm here. What Did y'all see do? me, Pat? I was literally like falling. I was like, I know you were a sleepy girl. Fuck. I'm so fucking tired about how you guys do it. Are we so wait, are this we're, are, we're still alive? We're still alive. We are still alive. alive. We're still alive. <laughs> so watch your uh, if you don't want to set on on it air. Was educational I know, I know, by the in way, more ways. Uh, Wait we, a minute. I, I clocked it. I knew Amy was falling asleep. We had to. We, we That's why Wendy home. said, "Okay, it's time to wrap up." She she looked. I seen her look at me. Uh, yes. Okay. Her, her eyes like glass over. But you guys, thank you for joining us for this show. We'll outro it. Um, James, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you bring us out. Because no, you know. uh, remember. Uh, um, <clears throat> for more information on coprophilia, uh, you can simply. <laughs> Uh, I would suggest shutting off your adult options and just enjoy yourself. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to talk to James because I saw her name was, and I, I, I've got questions. Uh oh. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. So, but that's another time, another place. All right. Everybody, <laughs> make sure you like, subscribe, and all that, that other you. stuff to the Indie Escape Network. And I mean, being part of the show, the network, it, the sticky microphone, which we're still going to get an explanation on that eventually. But... Why it's sticky? Why is it sticky? I think it's what? too vulgar to say on on live. To be honest, we just talked about we, coprophilia. How can it yeah, be we could talk about a sticky microphone. Trust it, me, it, it can get worse. All right, we'll have to we'll have to come up with an next <laughs> next time. We'll tell you why it's sticky. So. All, All right, right, until next time, guys. We are out.